demonstration, which will be supported by the support staff uh, helping me today in the form of Ashley Sikolal, who is National NDT's Johannesburg branch manager, as well as Mr. Ivan LaRue and Philip Borja. The presentation. If any of the participants would like to have any questions asked, you are more than welcome to put them in the chat section. And as we go through the course of the presentation and the practical demonstration, those that we can get to, we're more than happy to engage with. After the practical demonstration, we will have roughly about a 40 minute open Q&A section to any and all of the participants who would like to engage us at this point. With your permission, ladies and gentlemen, I am now going to proceed with the presentation itself. The contents of the presentation are broken up into five sectors. The introduction of CPR, what is CPR, why would you use CPR, where can CPR be used, and how is CPR done? Now, in the introduction of close proximity radiography, the principal reasons for utilizing close proximity radiography are threefold. One, cost savings. Number two, productivity. Number three, radiation safety. In summary, the need for production work to continue for 24 seven whilst conducting non-destructive testing in the form of industrial radiography is why we utilize the CPR system. Now, you may ask, what is close proximity radiography? CPR is the conducting of radiography in close proximity to authorized radiation workers, members of the public, or radiation sensitive monitoring devices in such a way as to ensure continuous and safe operations. CPR is achieved by utilizing a system of X-ray or gamma emitting devices incorporating specific collimation with rigid and or flexible shielding to reduce the primary beam and scattered radiation to safe levels at a desired barrier distance. Now, why would you want to use CPR instead of conventional radiography? First, we would focus on the cost savings. The cost savings themselves would be self-explanatory with a technology of this type. Number one, it helps eliminate non-productive costs. No shifts lost due to radiography, change downtime into productive time, it allows the acceleration of construction programs. It allows for the maximization of plant utilization. And it allows for quicker startup of plants. This is clearly obviously a benefit from everyone from manufacturers to project lead companies to the end users themselves. You need to ask yourself, how has conventional radiography impacted your work programs in the past. How would using CPR be of benefit to you? Continuing on why we would use it. Number one, it would eliminate conventional RT windows, which have been the bane of existence for shutdowns, projects, as well as for running plants. It would allow for the improvement of productivity it would allow for the improvement of radiation safety, both for the members of the public, as well as for radiation workers themselves. With the utilization of selenium, as opposed to iridium sources, we have an improvement in image quality. Simply for the reason that selenium, in terms of an isotope, is closer in wavelength form to X-ray than it is to iridium. Continuing on the case as why to use CPR instead of conventional radiography, in the sense of the elimination of conventional RT windows, 
It helps to reduce the safe working distance and production downtime through lower radiation levels in the work area. The way that we get this done, particularly with this system, is with the utilization of the proprietary Gammatech radiation safety calculator. With the utilization of this calculator, it allows us to determine how many protection sheets that we are required to use to bring a safe area down to the size that we would like to utilize it. Now, the size of the safe barrier distance that we are talking about can be anywhere from a cross section of three meters to six meters. This purely being dependent on the size, uh, size of source and by size of source, I mean how many curies. As, as you can see from the slide, in the case of a 50 curie selenium source, you are only having to barricade down a three meter area. If you were to try and do the same with a 50 curie iridium source, you would be barricading in excess of a cross section of 60 meters plus. And when you're looking at sites where they're doing 24 hour fabrication, this can be a significant pain in terms of lost downtime, where other activities are having to be suspended for the period in which radiographic activities are required to be done safely. This is everywhere from boiler making to welding, fitting, electrical, industrial, and any and all other activities that are required to take place during that period. The way that we help improve productivity is by the utilization of lightweight field loadable systems, by using a uniquely designed Selenium 75 gamma ray projector with snap-on technology, and by using specifically designed clamps and stands. In moving forward with the improvement of productivity, it allows you to, number one, eliminate the conventional RT windows as previously discussed. It eliminates the need to evacuate large areas of your plant or operating areas. It eliminates false alarms from plant radiation-based technologies, i.e. level switches, which can interfere with standard production of plants whilst in operation and it also reduces the safe working distance. In terms of radiation safety, which all of us participating here would obviously be taking as one of our number one priorities, it reduces radi radiation levels for everyone. It reduces dose rates for the radiographers, as important, it reduces the dose rates for the members of the public and for those companies that utilize the technology to your employees that are in the areas where these activities are taking place. It also reduces the chance of an unexpected and unforeseen radiation incident. In terms of improving image quality, the use of Selenium 75 for industrial radiography has gained wide acceptance. The advantages over Iridium 192 are in short, it has better contrast, it has better sensitivity, it has improved resolution, it has a lower energy range, i.e. it is easier for us to try and shield that wavelength as opposed to trying to shield Iridium, Cobalt, or any other higher energy isotopic sources. It also has a longer half-life. This is particularly important, particularly in long-term projects where sources are required to be reloaded to bring them to an effective strength in terms to maintain productions for your schedules. With a 120-day half-life, it is considerably in excess of the 73.83 day half-life for the conventional iridium source. It is important to know 
that Eddie Curie's of Selenium 75 is classified as a Class A source. An 80 Curie Selenium 75 is the equivalent of 27 Curies of Iridium 192, and that source activities of at least 80 Curies should be permitted for use on all work sites. Now you need to ask yourself, when would you use CPR instead of conventional radiography? There are five primary areas. One, maintenance shutdowns and turnarounds. New build programs. Corrosion monitoring. When radiation safety regulations cannot be safely met with conventional radiography and when you can't stop process by triggering radiation sensors. As you can see from the example shown on your screen, there are multiple configurations and sizes for which the CPR is ideally suited for utilization on. These are pipe to pipe, pipe to elbow, pipe to T, pipe to reducer, pipe to flange, pipe to socket. By utilizing the specialized design clamps and stands, as you can see from the images that are projected on your screen currently, we can, we can shoot all of the standard radiographic shots which are utilized in conventional radiography. These are the standard contact shot, standard contact shot using a collimator, also standoff shots. Although CPR is mostly carried out in the radiography of piping joints, shielding systems are very flexible, making its application limitly virtu uh, virtually limitless. As can be seen by the following slide, the purpose designed shielding cassettes, collimator apertures, and an articulating arm allow for fast setup for profile shots. This is utilized in your corrosion monitoring programs. The custom apertures allow for a reduction of the radiation beam to within the shielded footprint of the cassette area, thereby allowing us to be able to minimize the radiation in the area surrounding and also focus the beam in a specific direction as opposed to with conventional radiography where the impact of radiation is spherical from the point of source the application of this technology can also be utilized in tankage both in corrosion monitoring of existing tanks as well as in new fabrication builds. Powerful magnets attached to the projector to one side and lead shielding behind the film on the opposite surface. Custom apertures reduce the radiation beam once again to within the shielded footprint for tank T-shots. The improved productivity that is brought to you utilizing CPR through the usage of the clamps and the stands, it allows for fast shielding setup times on a wide range of piping configurations, which are made easier with flexible shielding material around user-friendly clamps and stands. As can be seen from the multiple different images that you are seeing, the shielding that is utilized in both contact and standoff shots can be manipulated to any way that is required to bring down the limited area that we need to safely work without impacting on running plant operations or new build or shutdown activities. The way we are able to achieve this, our supplier has been able to supply us with a fleet of SE75 transport containers for shipping globally, where our projects require us to be going 
whether it's within the borders of South Africa or working anywhere else in the world. The new generation light and compact tungsten shielded system, the projector can be shipped as normal cargo if required which means we don't even need to have the projector loaded upon point of shipping out to the required project area or refinery that is going under shutdown at the time. The isotopes can be loaded into specialized shipping containers, which are sh uh, can be shipped and the loading can take place live on site. Mm -hmm. The specialized container that we utilize for the isotope itself has unique technology in terms of the front end of the projectors have multiple different projector heads which work on with snap-on technology. So in other words, to convert your projector from one type of usage to another is a case of seconds as opposed to minutes or even hours. The container in question that we are speaking about here is the Exertus Selen 80 Circa Projector. It is lighter than standard conventional projectors at 8.8 .8 kilos, with specifically designed tungsten shielding and snap-on collimators, which allow for flash at source transitions between projector and collimator. This projector also comes with a unique safety feature a three color signal indicator, a winding mechanism that must be attached before source assembly can be released, as well as snap-on collimators and guide tubes, which must be attached before the projector will unlock. It is a three-fold safety system, which is far in advance of the majority of current systems out on the market. We improve our radiation safety with CPR with the utilization of purpose-designed collimation. The purpose-designed directional collimator features a 38-degree main side pole with interchangeable apertures for further beam shaping and reduction of barrier distance when and as where required. The port on the collimator can be swiveled through 360 degrees and the standard directional collimator is used in conjunction with the shielded guide tube. Staying on the theme of radiation safety, we are able to achieve this by using flexible high density shielding materials. Flexible silicone mats impregnated with various shielding materials are used for additional shielding and can be cut to shape as and how required. Although the standard shapes are 900 by 300 by 9.5 millimeters thick and 300 by 300 by 9.5 millimeters thick. Other sizes are available to order and as per the client's requirements for their projects, shutdowns or builds. Where complex shapes are required, the radiography of the shielding material, as has previously been said, can be manufactured to any custom size, shape or thickness. The shielding cassettes, which are also used in the standoff struts as well as in the tankage areas, the shielding cassette is designed to hold a 28 millimeter of lead tungsten or other shielding material to drastically reduce the primary beam radiation levels. A purpose designed shielding cone is used in conjunction with the shielding cassette and circa CP collimator or shielded guide tube collimator to further reduce the collimation of the beam and reduce scattered radiation. As you can see by each of the examples that have been given in each of the images, the focus here, and rightly so, is on safety first. I would like to give a special thanks, prior to us going into the physical demonstration, to Gamatech and the 
excellent staff for all of the technical support that they have provided in the compilation of this presentation. I would like to hand you now over to the practical demonstration team who will be headed by Ashby Sikolal, who is our Johannesburg branch manager, who will be ably assisted by Ian LaRue and Philip Borchett. Morning, everyone. So we'll start off today by doing a contact shot on a six-inch pipe. Um, for this purpose, we will not use a film as we purely want to show you the shielding capabilities of the system. We will, however, share some images taken with the system afterwards to show you what the selenium is capable of. I mentioned earlier, this is the, the Selen 80 circa projector with the CP80 collimator. And you would notice the projector has got a concave surface in the front, meaning that when your collimator connects to that, there's no flash of radiation as the source all the travel from the steel shielded position to the point of exposure. And it also works with the snap-on technology where you slide it in and it clips into place and there you've got your system ready. So on the collimator you've got a line in the center which allows you to align your center of your primary beam with your well. And then you just tighten your projector onto your pipe using the ratchet strap provided. As mentioned earlier, we've got different types of apertures for different types of shots. Um, these apertures just slide into the projector in the front or in the collimator rather. By loosening the screw, you loosen the nut and you pull back your collimator. You then insert your chosen aperture and you recycle it to avoid the aperture from sliding out. And at this point you align your Collimator on your degrees indicated and you lock it in place so that it doesn't turn while you continue your setup. So, with the contact shot, we used shielding mats. If I can show you, these, this is what they look like it's bismuth impregnated silicon. We've got valve brush straps weaved through them. And to strengthen them, we've got a layer of Kevlar in the middle to, to make them much stronger and they are not tearing because of that. Okay, so we always start off by using your three primary beam mats, depending on your source strength. Um, in this case, we are using a 27 Fury selenium source. And always ensure that the center of your mat is in line with the center of your point of exposure. So at this point, you ensure that the Velcro attaches to the, the previous layer and you do exactly the same with your third layer.
So these three take care of your primary beam radiation. And to reduce the scatter, we use similar mat, but in a larger format. But they're also slightly thinner because the scatter is not as penetrating as your primary beam. And then we've got an additional piece of Velcro just to, to get your ramp as tight as possible where there's any openings where scatter could possibly escape. You would just close that down with an additional layer of Velcro. At this point, we are ready for exposure. Um, can you guys see the, the monitor? Yeah. I'm currently at one and a half meter away. And the dose rate is 0.33 microsieverts per hour. As we, we go closer, this will definitely increase. So there we are on 3.2 microsieverts spike. And obviously as you continue to go closer, this is in the area, uh, primary beam at roughly 800 millimeters or 80 centimeters we are on 16 so double the distance quarter intensity we well below 10 microsieverts at, at 2 meters and that in short is the contact shot what we'll do now is we'll break down the shot and change the pipe to demonstrate a standoff ellipse shot or conventional small ball piping. So yeah, we've got a two inch pipe to pipe weld, which we'll do the demonstration on. So first off, we've got a pipe clamp, which has got a, a V at the bottom, which allows you to always set your projector and your system up 
in line with the pipe, so there's no misalignment or anything. That's attached to the pipe using a chain. If it's a coated pipe and you, you are concerned about damaging the coating, you slide a piece of Velcro over the chain, which you just keep between the pipe and the, the chain surface. And you tighten it using a tube socket and ratchet. So the next part of the setup is where you insert your legs, your cassette legs. So we add a lead cassette later on to reduce your, uh, your primary beam radiation. These legs have dimples across its length, which engages with a wing bolt, which once you have your setup complete, there's no dropping or sagging of your setup, which could result in a reshoot. So that eliminates that possibility. So instead of using the shielded mats, we have a lead cassette with a, a seven sheets of four millimeters lead. You can obviously reduce that as your source gets weaker, but in this case we have them all in. You insert it towards your legs so that they can't pull out. At this point, you would put your film, your IQI, and anything else you require on your cassette, and you would lift it up towards your well. Then we slide over what we call the stand up legs. It's angled at 17 degrees, which gives you a perfect ellipse when you're shooting. We've tested it, the ellipse opening is, is code compliant. That slides over your, your legs. And it's attached again using your wing box. At this point, we slide over the projector clamp or projector face. As you would notice, it's got two slots or grooves on the base, which engages with your projector's feet, which means again, you can't misalign. It's always going to be square with your path. That slides over your stand-up legs. And at this point, you drop your projector in place and lock it with your two projector rocks. So for alignment, we use a green laser. The reason for green is because it's better visible in, in daylight than a red laser. This attaches to your, your collimator. So it engages with your aperture. Tighten it down with your Velcro strap. And then you, you ensure that you are on the well. I don't know if you can see the camera closely. 
And at this point, you would do your, your micro adjustment to make sure that you are spot on on your, your weld. In this case, we are still about five millimeters off, but that is easily adjusted using your, your projector itself. And there we go. At that point, you lock your collimator in place again. So next is what we call the shielding gun. It is basically two stainless steel cells with a five millimeter cavity in between, which is lead filled to reduce your scatter. So that drops onto your cassette and you lower your projector onto the, the cone so that it engages with your cone. At this stage, the cone is made for up to a 2 inch pipe. If you get an extension, it allows you to go up to a 4 inch. But if you go smaller, there's obviously a small opening in the front, which you can easily close up using your standard lead shot bags. And again, you can keep that in place with bungee cords, or you could use the Velcro straps provided in the kit as well. And that, in short, is the contact, uh, the standoff shot ellipse setup, which we will now expose. And at one and a half meters, we've got a dose rate of plus minus four microsieverts. In the primary thing, because we've got the, the lead sheets in there, at one meter we are at 3.4 microsieverts. And if anybody doubts that there's a source in, there's actually a, a source there. And that is our setup for your standard shot using your cone. What we'll demonstrate next is just briefly how the setup works if you don't have access to use your cone and, or you prefer to use mats. We will just remove certain elements and add mats just to demonstrate the visibility of the system. So when you when you do use mats, you don't want the the mats interfering with your area of exposure. So we've created legs that you just slide in on top, which provides you a box shaped structure, which allows for easier wrapping of your shielding mats. These are adjustable. And at this point, you would now wrap your mats around your structure, similar to what you've done with a contact shot. We won't put more, we just try and see what Yeah. 
and after all your reps you can expose and obviously reduce your barrier significantly. The system can do backward inverse shots. We can share all the different types of shots that there is, is possible. In cases where you don't have access in a pipe rack, pipe rack or, or other areas, we provide a shielded guide tube. So this is a tungsten shielded tube with a smaller guide uh, collimator which allows you to access your area of interest a lot easier. Again, this clips onto your projector using the snap-on technology and that is, in short, the gang PPR. To the attendees watching, the thing I want to get across with the system that we're talking about in particular is the sun, it may seem clunky, it may seem awful. The utilization of this technology is important. Number one, safety. It is designed in such a way as to reduce the radiation footprint that is generated by the projector itself. Number two, the GAMP CPR was never designed to compete with conventional radiography in terms of production. This system is not as quick in terms of the number of shots that it is able to use as conventional radiography. But there is a counterbalance to that. In the speed that you achieve with conventional radiography, simply from the size of the area that has had to be barricaded before the conventional radiography operations take place, you are losing out in additional operations which is costing money and time. This is of significant impact to turnarounds, shutdowns, new builds, and particularly if you're working on very tight schedules. Where you have a lower rate of production per hour still allows you to maintain a higher production rate per 24 hour with zero to little impact on your existing operations and also by not negatively impacting the safety of both the radiation worker as well as the other members of the public and your employees that are working in the same area as these activities are taking place. I just need you to take problems and back there. Thank you. Yes. Um, to the attendees, um, we will now be going over to a Q&A session to any of the attendees. If you have any questions from your side that you would like answered, you are more than welcome to put them in the chat at this point, and we would be more than happy to engage with you in terms of response. Hi, Neville. Um, Neville, in regards to your question, uh, where can you view comparison of radiographs done between IR-192 and Selenium-75? We don't currently have that information on hand directly with us for this presentation today, but we are more than happy to supply you with those comparators. Um, and what you will see is that there is an improved image quality with the utilization of selenium. Um, and that is through any of the film type formats. It's whether you're using conventional film or computer radiographic film. It's simply a case of wavelength. Um, it's a better form of radiation, which is closer in terms to X-ray than it is to iridium, which is what you would almost refer to as a harsher form of radiation. It has higher penetrating capabilities, but its contrast is not quite as good as is achieved by selenium. Um, I hope that answers your question, Neville. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it does answer the question. Thank you very much. No problem. To all of the attendees that are present, if there are any more questions that you have, you are more than happy to engage us. And we are more than happy to engage back with you and see whether we can answer any of the questions you may have that range from technical, commercial. We're happy to 
deal with any and all. How how do the costs compare when using um, conventional iridium one nine two or selenium selenium seventy five? Um, well, what, what I'll tell you, Neville, straight up, is that um, the GAM CPR system is more expensive than conventional radiography. But where the balance is paid off is in terms of the man hours saved in the other activities that take place on your plant. So you no longer have the lost man hours in regards to welding, fitting, boiler making your electrical guys and all the other surrounding activities that take place that is traditionally lost when having to shoot large windows, two hour, three hour, four hour windows. And it also allows the minimization of the impact on your construction schedule in terms of your build plan. So shot for shot, yes, it's more expensive, but it allows you to work on your sites for 24-7 while allowing us to radiograph 24-7. If, if you see what I'm getting at, Neville. No, I've, I've had the advantage of interfacing with JJ prior to this presentation. Uh, yes, sir. And we've, we've discussed this um, at length. And we've, we've got a, a job where the equipment in the area is very radiation sensitive. Yes, sir. And we're not permitted to do radiography outside of normal working hours. So this seems to be the obvious option. Yes, sir. Th this allows you to radiograph through any point of the day. As I said, one of the functions behind the GAM CBR system is it was designed specifically to allow the utilization of radiographic activities so that it would not impact instrumentation which is sensitive to the presence of ionizing radiation because th this has always been a bone of contention particularly for running plants for decades the the at best they would be annoyed when radio uh, radiation uh, radiographics would take place on their plants because they knew they were going to get trip outs or they were going to get false alarms and with the utilization of this technology, it allows us to bypass that issue. It allows them to safely operate their plants without false alarms or inadvertent trips. And it also allows you to conduct the radiographic activities you would like to conduct. During normal working hours without clearing a, a complete area? That's yeah. correct, sir. The, the size of area you would be required to um, clear out would be no larger a cross section than six square eh, six six square meters, even using the largest sized isotopes. And I see in the uh, in the chat box, the the GAM Pro equipment can be used with different sources. So you could presumably you could lose it with an iridium source. Yes. Use the same shielding. No. Still you wouldn't have to you wouldn't be able to use the same shielding the, the shielding remember iridium has a higher penetrating capability yeah. than selenium does uh, so you would end up having to use considerably and i mean considerably more shielding when it comes to iridium this is why we use selenium selenium has a weaker waveform which is easier for us to contend with in terms of trying to collimate whereas iridium it gets to a point, depending on the component you're trying to shoot, to effectively collimate it to the degree that we can collimate selenium with the Gamex, is the sheer weight of the shielding alone would make it impractical. Now, I know that that's obvious when you say that an 80 curie uh, selenium is equivalent to a 27 curie iridium. That's correct. So in terms of iridium, yes, we could use iridium sources, but we wouldn't be able to use it in excess. We, we wouldn't feel comfortable using iridium simply for the sheer amount of weight of shielding that would be required. In certain circumstances, iridium can be used, but that is a purpose-built um, activity that would take place and it would require a lot of background work to be done to know that we can do that safely without it impacting the operations for which you would want to use them. 
Okay, and and training of the technicians to become familiar with um, this type of equipment and setup and that that is handled by our uh, local suppliers in South Africa, uh, Gamata. Um, they fabricate the equipment and the technology. They also supply training to our technicians. Um, this is actually a process that we've had with in place with Gamatech for several years to very high degrees of success. The training curve, so to speak, for the technicians from first learning of the technique to being competent in the field is a period of days. Uh, it's a very short learning curve and it's more a case of learning the mechanics of the system than learning, having to learn how to do radiography. So it's getting used to how to utilize the jigs and the shielding, and that's a very quick process. Uh, all right, thank you very much. Not a problem at all. Are there any other questions or queries from any of the participants currently? Maybe just a little more on my side. Um, I'm Charles Strumpf, um, uh, um, the RPO for SASL, uh, and we're looking also into the, the safe um, radiation practices uh, within SASL. Um, I think we just will have to go through the whole process because we've got a current process with which we manage and um, ensure the safety of um, radiation uh, radiography taking place. Um, if we want to utilize this type of system, then we definitely will have to look at the whole process and procedures to ensure that it's done in a safe way as well. Um, oh. Oh, absolutely, Charles. And we will be more than happy to engage with you on that front in terms of the supply of procedures as well as um, site demonstrations of the technology so that you can see it utilized in real time. Um, it's a case of one thing seeing it in a presentation format. It's obviously, as you're fully aware, a different thing of seeing it actually utilized in the field where you can take readings yourself to satisfy that yourself that the operations that are taking place meet SASL standards for safe operations for radiographic activities. So we're, we're quite happy to engage with you on all those fronts, Charles. Good. I see JJ wants to say something as well. Hi, Charles. Uh, yes, just to add in uh, quickly, our GAN CPR procedures has been approved on SASL Sinfield Secunda and in um, Sasso Dog already. So that process has begun with Marius already. Um, so yeah, I, I think we're about 95% uh, there. Uh, contractually on Sasso side, we have the contract already for, for executing and um, maybe the engagement with the RPO would be the last step um, before we can actually start utilizing this method on Sasol. Good. Thanks, JJ. JJ, from your side, if we have no more engagement in, say, the next five minutes, um, at that point, we would like to uh, conclude the session. What I would like to say in the interim is I would like to thank all of the attendees for signing in today. We appreciate your participation and we look forward to engaging you in the future, not only with CPR, but other technologies that we believe our company can bring to bear to your organizations and to your shutdowns, your builds, um, and where we can support you from an NDT capacity in terms of views moving forward. So to all the attendees, I thank all of you. I would also like to put a special thanks out to Gamatech, to all of the support shown by their management as well as their staff here today, uh, without which we couldn't have successfully done this presentation. So to Gamatech, a um, uh, very warm thank you. And as always, it's been an excellent experience uh, working with these suppliers 
who, as always, are world class. And we look forward to many years of active engagement with them walking forward, not only with this technology, but in several other technologies when we have direct contact with. Um, anything from your side, JJ? Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Michael. I think we'll give it a few minutes just to uh, make sure that there is no questions missed. And then I also want to add in that the session is recorded, so please feel free to send me an email afterwards to request for the recording. For some of your colleagues that uh, was not able to attend, we would gladly share this information with you. Um, if there's any project-specific uh, pricing that you require, also, please feel to uh, feel free to send me an email with uh, the scope of work with the scenario. We will gladly um, quote you accordingly. Uh, yet again, um, to extend on uh, Michael, Michael, um, thanks for everyone for attending. Um, we will keep you posted uh, for any future webinars that we are going to host. Um, thank you. Uh, be safe.